Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another Meaningful Monday. Uh, welcome to everyone who's normally here, and a warm welcome to anybody new who's never been here before. Uh, just to let you know, this is the first Monday of every month, and the purpose is just really to add value, raise awareness, that we create our own reality. I'll demonstrate that tonight. Specifically, we do all create our own reality. Nobody here is a victim. And if you think you're a victim, you're just missing out on all the power that you do have um, inside of you. So um, I just want to really welcome you to tonight's Meaningful Monday, which is how to coach yourself. And does anyone find this interesting? Yes? Okay. Jacinta is the only one I can see. The rest of them I can't see. Let me see if I can make more tiles here. Um, keep your cameras on. Okay, Sabrina's writing the chat box. Yes, use the chat box if you can. I really love that. Um, so my name is Janine Shaka, and I'm excited for what you're going to learn today because I am a coach. I've had a coach. I've also had times when I have not had a coach. And over time, I have successfully learned to coach myself. I still do pay for coaching, um, but I can coach myself anytime, anywhere, you know, I don't have to be in a coaching session. And this is what I want to help you be empowered with that today. Now, um, look, there are many reasons why people like you come along to an evening like this or whatever you want to get out of the evening. But really, what I've really found is that um, even though we all have a unique reason why we want to be here, why we jumped on tonight, they often fall kind of into three categories. And they're driven by what I would call three core frustrations. So may, you may or may not be experiencing these. Let me just put them up. So these are what I call these core frustrations. Okay, so first of all, feeling stuck. Um, you may be feeling stuck in some area of your life where you want a different result. It could be health, it could be relationships, it could be uh, money, it could be career, life purpose, it could be spirituality. And you're feeling stuck because it's something that you've wanted for a long time and haven't got it yet and don't know how to change that. You don't actually know how to create that. That's one. Another typical core frustration is, which it says here, um, <laughs> Bianca says, oh dear, all three, self-sabotage behavior or procrastination. So when we have self-sabotage or procrastination, generally the feeling, if I'm correct, is that you feel out of control. People who procrastinate, when they're procrastinating, they feel out of control the moment that they're doing that and they have, and they don't know how to get that control in their lives. Um, I'm just going to, hi Kay and welcome. I'm just going to mute yours and you can unmute yourself anytime. Please do use the chat box to type any questions or any comments. Um, I do welcome them. And then the last core frustration um, is that you could be frustrated and that you want to do this or you want to do that, but you don't take any action, not because you don't want to take that action, but because at a deep subconscious level, you lack self-confidence. And I say that specifically subconscious level because sub means below and conscious means awareness. So it means you are not even aware as to what this thing is that's holding you back. So at a deep subconscious level, you're not acting on anything and that um, thing that's going on under the surface, that's driving your behavior of not taking action is actually lack of self-worth, lack of self-confidence. So who can relate to these? Yes, maybe. Can't see all of you, but I'm assuming. Me. So, excellent, yeah, jump in and unmute yourselves and speak. Thank you, Hanen, for, well, here's the opportunity. I'll give it all to you. Before we go any further, this is gonna be great. What I'd like you to do is please type into the chat box, what is your main frustration? It could be one of these three, it could be a completely different one. Just type in your main frustration. Let me just type here as well. What is your main frustration? Feeling stuck, lack of self-confidence, frustration. Um, I think as a combo of all three, self-sabotage. Okay, they sound, they sound like they are these core, these three cores that I'm talking about. All right. Now, um, let's just ask a question. You can raise your hand like this or you can raise your hand. You know, there's a nice little button there that says, um, 
I don't have it. Reaction. Oh, there, reactions. Someone's just joined. You can put your hand up there if you like, but I want, I want to know, raise your hand if you agree that every single one of us have self-sabotage from time to time. I do. Okay, people have raised their hand. Two participants, three participants have raised their hand. Yep, okay, four have raised their hand. Right, and who would agree that knowing how to get yourself unstuck no matter the situation would be really valuable because the truth is people are raising their hand left right and center yeah because feeling stuck is exactly that we don't know how to get unstuck that's what it's called stuck and i've got my um one of my mentors paul martinelli he's the president of the john maxwell team i love his saying always says stuck stinks and i agree um, when you are stuck, it does stink. It's this horrible feeling because you think you th you think that no one understands you, that you're all alone in the world in this situation, and you don't know what to do about it. Um, Vicky's got another frustration is um, feeling stuck, lacking clarity, and the others would fall into place if there was clarity. I love that. Now you're going to love this, um, Vicky, because I'm actually going to talk exactly about clarity in just a second. And then unknown sabotage, as someone said, that's um, from Sam and feeling irritated. All right, excellent. So here we go, the main problems. We have. So there you go, Vicky, lack of clarity on the first screen. Look, um, I'll just share with you, when I first left corporate in 2015, it was, I had the good fortune of helping hundreds of people with coaching, um, training people in the silver method, masterminds, um, even now gone on to become, um, I'm very grateful, um, director of the silver method for Australia and also over South Africa. And during that time, I've discovered that there are these three main problems that actually get in the way of everybody's success. And maybe you want to write these down. Lack of clarity in relation to your ultimate vision, poor productivity abilities and unclear on a person's value and unclear on your purpose. And, um, you know, I found that when people like yourselves are able to overcome these main problems, that you're able to actually develop more freedom, uh, more time, more success, better work life balance, um, and uh, you're just happier. I think a person's also significantly more connected to their true life's purpose. And this can ultimately lead to just being more successful overall. So I find these very relevant. Now, before I get into self-coaching, I'm going to share a recent experience. Some of you will love this story. I hope I love it because it happened just today's Monday. It happened last week. Um, so some of you may or may not know, but I have another arm to my business. It's not personal development. I help clients invest in property. So I'm a senior consultant for something called 2020 Property Advisory. We're a research-based property advisory business and we just help with research, finding areas of growth and helping clients invest. So about four weeks ago, I helped a client invest um, in properties and everything was locked away. They bought several, not just one. And uh, just last week out of nowhere, no explanation, I think I got an email saying we're pulling out of all of them. So at the very moment that I got this terribly bad news, I felt a bit down. So I just like slumped, you know, my shoulders slumped down. And um, I was just about to kind of go, oh, that's really crappy, excuse the expression, and just let it happen to me and just accept that as my fate. And how many of you have actually had a failure happen to you and you just, you just accepted it? You just said, oh, well, bad luck happens and this is what happened to me. It is what it is, and we just accept it. That happens to all of us. But as I was feeling bad, I got the awareness that something bad has happened, and I'm feeling negative emotion. And thank goodness that I have this awareness, and it's just from continuous practice, guys. It's from training the silver method for many years um, and practicing the silver method for many, many years, and all the personal development books and courses that I've done in my life. I have quite a high level of self-awareness and I'm sharing this with you deliberately to tell you that awareness is the very first thing. So as I've got the awareness, I'm down, I'm feeling bad, I've got negative emotion 
and in the silver method we teach you create your own reality every one of you sitting here create your own reality there's absolutely no doubt you may not be aware of it if you're not aware or you don't think so but you are so either we're aware we're doing it or we're not aware but we all are doing it 100 percent of the whole population are doing it just the difference is people are aware not are not aware so as someone who trains this stuff i got ah so here i am feeling bad and then i remembered thought precedes manifestation thought precedes manifestation so in that moment i just made a decision i'm going to use this experience to quote unquote create my own reality and i'm actually going to have fun with it i've got nothing to lose i really pulled out of these properties i've got nothing to lose so immediately i took action i stopped what i was doing i closed my eyes i went into meditation and I just visualized all three properties sold. I just, I just did it until, you wanna write this down, until I had the feeling of success. The feeling, the emotion. That's what we do in the silver method, even when we do mirror of the mind to manifest what we want. I tell the class, when you're visualizing, you must have the feeling. So there I was, I closed my eyes, I started to visualize until I had this feeling of success. And then what happened was while I was visualizing in a relaxed meditative state, an idea popped into my head. If you're making notes, please write this down. The idea is the first manifestation. And the idea was to send the client an email with some pertinent information. Um, and I thought it was related just intuitively to the reasons that they're pulling out. And I also sent them some extra market information. Anyway, I did that. Long story short, guys, hear this. Two hours later, all three properties were sold. Now, normally as an estate agent, if you know anyone or you are one, that's very, very, very rare, okay? You take weeks um, sometimes to sell one property. So here I went from losing all three, two hours later, just by stopping before I let the negative emotion continue, close my eyes, visualized, till I got the feeling of success, two hours later, all three were sold. Now, um, I'm not telling you this to brag or impress you. I'm telling you this because it is absolutely pertinent that you realize that you too are as powerful and we're creating our own reality all the time. The total turnaround that I received in that, what I would call disaster to success, it was all because of decision that I made to immediately take action. I could have gone down, lost that money. Here it is. Let me just get it up on my thing. At that point, I made a decision and then I decided to take action and there, visualized, got an idea, sent the email, problem solved. So this is Rhonda Byrne. She says, visualization is the process of creating pictures in your mind of yourself enjoying what you want. That's that feeling of success. And when you visualize, you generate powerful thoughts and feelings of having it. So for me, it was like, yep, they absolutely sold. I didn't accept anything other than that feeling that they absolutely sold. Like what is reality did not count. It was off the table, out the window. And I just said, yep, that feeling it's done. It's complete. It's happened. And then it says there, the law of attraction then returns that reality to you, just as you saw it in your mind. So I'm sharing this with you because this can help you. Um, because I would have not been able to do that had I not known how to coach myself. So if you're not ready to hire a coach, then give yourself a taste of what it's like by following the steps I'm going to share with you now about coaching yourself. What do you think? Type in the chat box. Let me just go back to the chat. I see there's some comments there. Um, I feel so emotionally exhausted due to really hard things that have happened. So I can't find the motivation to get myself unstuck. Yes, Bianca, that's absolutely real and um you just look there are several options to say to you but i can say to you if we are exhausted whether it's physically mentally or emotionally that needs um to be addressed um, and it needs to be addressed properly and daily and even if it's i'm, I'm kidding you I'm, I'm not kidding you sorry even if it's only 15 minutes a day I don't know if you meditate, Bianca, but um, if you do, just type it in the chat box. And if you don't, it says, what if you can't take action because you're stuck in pain? Is that physical pain? And uh, you do meditate. Um, do you meditate daily, like for 50 minutes a day? Emotional pain. Yep, so these things need to be addressed, right? Um, 
I can't go into the specifics now because I don't know the specifics, but um, this slide is actually quite interesting. I wish, but not possible every day. Okay, if you could meditate every day, at least, and especially if you've got emo um, exhaustion is the word you use and emotional pain, the silver method recommends if you've got something to heal or repair, that you do it three times a day for 50 minutes. Now, you might not have the liberty with all that time, but if you could do it twice a day in the morning and at night before you go to bed for 15 minutes every day, you'll find after one week, you'll feel a whole lot better. And um, Hanen said, I can't see any slides. Has anyone else got that problem? No, Jacinta can see them. She's saying no. Hanen, just um, log out and log back in or something. I'm not too sure what why that's happened. So uh, with Bianca's situation, you might, if you, if you need help and you're not ready to coach yourself, I'm going to show you how to coach yourself, but sometimes we do need first to actually hire a coach. I had a coach and um, I don't have one all the time. And then I pay again and I have a coach again. So it's like, it depends on which part of my life that I'm at, but the more self-awareness that you have, and the more you actually have the discipline, the discipline to take time out to coach yourself, sorry, um, the better and better you get. I just want to let some people in. I just jumped off. Okay. So let me just continue here. Oh, hold on. Um, do you have meditations on your website? Yep. Yeah. So Bianca, you can go to my website is janineshakainternational.com and on the homepage, you can fill in, just scroll down, you can fill in uh, your name and click the button then you can get the long relax and some other information there's a freebie just get that and practice that long relax every day it's fantastic it's healing and it's got many benefits there's a video to watch first if you do that um sarah writes bianca looks like you may need to defragment your personal or business life and see feel what is happening could be environment emotional trauma. yep so i'm not going to go into the specifics thanks sarah um here but um i'm happy to speak to you afterwards absolutely if you'd like to do that um, all right, so life changes when you make a decision to invest in yourself. Now, investing in yourself, even if you're coaching yourself, is still a self-investment because you have to take the time out. Thank you, pleasure, Bianca. Take the time out to stop and put in the effort to coach yourself. So it's either an investment of time and money, sometimes it's both. But it's life-changing. It's life-giving. It's recharging, it's energizing to get the feeling that you're in control of your life. So even myself, the story I mentioned about the properties, you know, when I got that news, I went from feeling just normal to suddenly drained, like my energy just drained. And I thought, oh, you know, it takes so long to, you know, get one cell, let alone two, let alone more than two. Um, and then when I had the awareness, no, stop and just take this process. Ah, I'm going to have fun with it. I've got nothing to lose and create my own reality. And when I did it and I felt the feeling, I already had more energy. When that idea popped and I took action on the idea, I had even more energy. And then I started getting responses and emails coming back. Phone calls were going and I got even more energy. And then two hours later, when it was all resolved, I was feeling amazing. And that's when I say it's life changing to feel in control of your life. Because, excuse me, we can all be in control of our lives and positively create our reality if we have the awareness. And awareness is the first step. And I'm going to repeat it many times because you first need awareness before you can ever coach yourself. Because I coached myself there. I stopped, I paused, and I thought this negative emotion is not going to help me. Because remember, negative thoughts give negative outcomes. Negative feelings give even more negative outcomes because feelings are even stronger than a thought and positive feelings give positive outcomes. That is the law. You can't change it. It's universal law. It's God's law. And you know what, guys, even if you don't believe in the law of attraction, it still works. And I recommend we do believe and remember it because if we don't believe in it, we sometimes think, oh, it's not really true. So I'll just be grumpy. And that's where the problem lies, is that we allow ourselves to be grumpy. So life rewards actions, not intentions. We can't think, oh, you know, I should do something about it. No. Close your eyes, go deep within, 
relax, visualize until you feel that success and hold that feeling until you've really, really changed your energy in your body. You'll know when you're ready to come out of the meditation or the visualization because you know how it feels. So get unstuck with coaching. So we can coach ourselves. And if you can't coach yourself, then you might need to hire a coach. But otherwise, get unstuck with coaching. That is honestly the way um, to help yourself. The first step is that awareness. I'm going to tell you a quick story that you might not know about me. In 2017, I was very, very stuck. In 2017, I'd been, I'd been running my own business for two years. It was June. It was a cold, miserable day. I was sitting at this very desk where I am right now at home. I was working from home at that time. And it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. And I found myself extremely frustrated with myself because I had another unproductive day. And I'd wasted most of the day. It was now three o'clock in the afternoon and I hadn't really done much. Now I was busy, but unproductive. So if anyone knows what that means, busy, but unproductive, you can put a, you know, you for unproductive in the chat box. If you know that you've ever had activity the whole day, you've been busy doing things, but at the end of the day, you look back and you actually haven't accomplished flipping anything. Let me just see what's in the chat here. Sounds like me. Okay. So you know what that is, you know, you, you answering emails or you filing documents, or I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what I was doing, but I was unproductive and I was frustrated because it wasn't only that day that I'd wasted like that. It was actually most of that week. And if I was really honest with myself, it probably was for a couple of weeks. And by this stage, I was really frustrated with myself. I was feeling more stuck than I'd ever felt in months. And I just thought to myself, Janine, you've got to do something. You can't grow your business if you don't take some kind of different action. So I don't know how it happened, but the next thing, I was looking at a meetup group in, in Barangaroo. I don't know if it was on my phone or how it came up. And it was law of attraction happened to be called business growth and mindset free talk. So there again, I made a decision to attend that event. It was the very next day. So I took the action and I booked myself in. Now, when I arrived, there were about 40 chairs there and there were only maybe two people sitting in this big room with all these chairs. It was all empty. So I immediately assumed I was in the wrong place. I turned around, I was about to leave. And then this lady in the front of the room wearing a beautiful bright, bright, bright dress. She bellows out with this like German Austrian accent, very friendly. Hello, welcome, you know, take a seat. I thought she's, I can't run away now because now she's seen me and she says, I'm Marie, take a seat. So um, I, said, um, I said, I think I'm in the wrong place. She goes, no, are you here to learn about business growth and mindset? So I said, yes. She goes, oh, in the right place, please sit down. Anyway, I sat through a talk. I took about four pages of notes. It was fantastic. It was all about productivity, um, um, positive mindset, you know, some things I knew and some things I had to be reminded about, but it was just like, gee, this is a, a massive relief as to how terrible I was feeling the day before. So unproductive. And here she's giving us all these productivity tips and I could relate to all of them. I know that I could apply them in my life if I had to. Anyway, at the end of the talk, she wanted feedback forms. I filled mine in. And as I gave it to her, um, I just gave her my business card as well. And then she offered a free consultation. So I said, um, I'm going to call you and have that free consultation. It was really to see if we were the right fit. It was just to um, like an intake session for her coaching. I had no idea what it cost. I had no idea if I could afford it, but I just said yes. And I thought I've got to do something. Anyway, I was very really nervous. I was very unsure. I had a few days before I was going to meet with her. And um, I kept thinking, am I making the right decision? I've, have I overcommitted myself? Is this the right thing for me? Anyway, at the free consultation, she asked me question after question after question. I just, and the more I was talking, the more I realized how much time I'd wasted in my own life. And I could have been growing my business if I just had some more of this like guidance, which she'd been giving me. And um, so just talking to her, I really felt even more empowered. And you know what it was? It was just the fact of having someone there. And I call that person um, an accountability partner because working alone from my office at from my own desk at home from which I call my home office you know you can be unproductive and no one's gonna know and you don't and there's no one to tell and you know you can just like kid yourself that you're actually doing something worthwhile and you're not and you're just wasting your time so I always say the benefit of a coach is to actually get to where you're going to get anyway but just in a much much faster space of time almost like an accelerated journey um anyway 
after speaking to Marie, um, I just thought to myself, I'm done feeling frustrated and I'm suddenly feeling energized just talking to her and feeling supported. So I signed up to a coaching. It was a lot more expensive than what I expected it to be. It was even a lot more expensive than I charge today, but um, for myself. But I made the investment in myself because I knew it was the best investment I'd ever make. And if I didn't change, I wouldn't have been able to grow my business. And the minute that I signed up, having a coach, it felt actually like I had employed my own CEO. That might sound a bit strange, but for me, she was so um, decisive as a person and so clear in her um, guidance. And um, she was also a, a business coach and a business mentor. She was not just a coach which asked questions, she was a, a mentor. She also gave advice and I wanted advice. I said, how do I do that? How do I do that? And she just shot answers off at me. So I felt like I really hired my own CEO. Like there was someone in my corner, not only me, who was working on my life, my business, my agenda. Anyway, to give you a long story short, all I can say is coaching absolutely transformed my life. Um, within two days of that meeting with her, I started working out of the Barangaroo. It's like a co co-working space, like a WeWork type thing. I started working out of Barangaroo. My sales just took off. I met so many people at Barangaroo. Some of them um, became, if anyone knows Greg, Greg Weiss. I met him at Barangaroo. He became a Silver Method client of mine. Um, he's my coaching client today. We've been working together for several years. Um, I just got referrals. Just being in Barangaroo with all the people I was talking to. So everything started to take off. And my business in just six months went from here to here. It was almost like going to the next level. I hired Nancy in that time. Um, I also, by the end of the six months, I had signed a lease in Concord where my office is. That's another great story. If anyone's read my book, you'll read that story in there. It was something I'd never expected to do so quickly. And there I was within six months. I had my own office, my own training center. And I'm not going to brag, guys, but the truth was up until that year, 2017, it was the most money I'd ever earned in my entire life was in that year. And I can put that down just to being coached because coaching helps you have the accountability of checking in. So you just feel like I better do this and I better do that. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell Marie when I see you, I'm going to tell my coach, you know, speaking like that. Also, we did an event. Um, some of you here tonight might have been there. It was called Out of This World in 2018. It was a four day retreat that I had a dream of doing for years and years and years, at least 12 years deep in my mind. Um, I never had the guts to actually go ahead and do it. And I even pulled that off and Marie actually co-hosted or co-presented that four day retreat with me. It was fantastic. And all I can say is I'm so grateful. I couldn't have been happier. I felt so blessed. Things were getting better in my life. I was becoming more confident in my ability to get unstuck. And I was becoming more and more confident in my ability to coach myself. So I'm here tonight and excited to help you get unstuck with coaching and learning how to coach yourself. So I hope that you're keen. All right, so getting unstuck allows you to one, take more action towards your goals because that's what we do when we procrastinate. That's what we do, we don't take action or we just have fear. Who's had fear that just didn't let you take the action? Before I met Marie, the, the main reason I actually found my, my feedback form on my phone, I was gonna put it in the slideshow, I just didn't have time because I was on a course before I came on here. But I found, I took a photo of the feedback form that day in Barangaroo that I gave Marie. And the thing that I wanted most help with was um, um, creating events because I had a fear of people not booking. So I never created events. I used to take so long to prepare and prepare and prepare. And all I have to say to you guys is pre preparation is overrated. Action rewards your life. Taking action is what gets you, you your results. The other thing here, um, getting unstuck allows you to get clarity also on your life's purpose. Um, it also gives an incense, incredible sense of control over your life. And that's my main big take out the minute I was working with a coach. I felt like I was kind of in control of my life. I felt what I was saying was more effective. What I was doing was more productive and I wasn't wasting time anymore. And when you're doing all those things, you end up getting more of what you truly desire. So that just makes kind of sense on its own. All right, so here we go. This is how you coach yourself. If you want to take notes or take a photograph of the screen, go ahead. I'm not going to be able to go through each and every one of these in absolute depth, but I'm going to go through my, um, some of them in absolute depth. 
Okay, so the first thing I've been saying it through all the stories I've told you tonight is awareness. You must have the self-awareness of a couple of things. Firstly, negative emotion. The only thing I can say is who controls your emotions? Please type in the chat box, who controls your emotions? Someone's brave enough to write in there. Myself. Thank you, Sarah. Jay, Jacinta, me. Correct. Some people say, look what you made me do. Look what she made me do. Look what he made me feel. Tell me what you think that is. Look what he made me do. What language is that? The language of a? Blaming. Yes. Victim. Thank you, Sarah. 10 out of 10. Narcissist. <laughs> Go K. Yes, it could be a narcissist. Um, but definitely a victim mentality. A victim says, that person made me feel sad. That person made me feel that. No, losing three properties. I cannot say the three properties off the table made me sad. Because the minute I had the awareness, which is number one, that I was feeling sad, I said to myself, stop, pause, create your own reality. Have fun with this. You've got nothing to lose. Great. Close my eyes, lay back in my chair in my office. We need to meditation and visualize, 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 visualize. Awareness, guys, awareness. So first and foremost is awareness of what? Negative emotion. Please write that down. Awareness of negative emotion. Because you know what? If you are stuck, you have negative emotion. So if I say negative emotion, I'm covering everything. And you can only feel two ways. You can feel good or you can feel bad. That's it. People say there's so many emotions. Yes. They're different shades of feeling good and they're different shades of feeling bad. So bad has got like frustration, grief, anger, jealousy, sadness, despair, hopelessness, helplessness, but they're all negative. So it's either one or the other. So if you want to um, practice this um, initially, if you don't actually have a coach or you're not working with a coach, because I, I must tell you, when I coach clients, I tell them in the very first interview, the free consultation with me, I say, if you coach with me, I teach you how to coach yourself on every single technique we do. Otherwise, it's normal coaching where we have the questioning technique through a certain process. But otherwise, I also do rapid results coaching, which is a, a different certification. It's like techniques to rapidly release things. Some of you like um, who are here tonight, you know who you are, have done the universal freedom technique or the soul retrieval technique kind of thing. But I, those are different. You release them and gone. But other things on how to um, not self-sabotage, I teach the client how to do that. And that technique has actually been used with heroin addicts. So it's tested with the most difficult behaviors to change, the most difficult addictions or habits. It's called shadow values. And um, I teach clients how to use the shadow values once you've done it to, to coach themselves. If it's middle of the night and you have this desire to do the wrong thing, whatever the thing that you're trying to fix, and I'm sleeping and we don't have a coaching session in the middle of the night. Well, you know how to do it on your own. Just, you know, do the technique and you come out of it. So coaching yourself, but you've got to have awareness first. Okay. And you don't have to have a coach first. You could have the awareness and depending, everyone's different. Some people do need a coach. Like at that time in 2017, I needed one. I didn't need one all the time until today on and off. When I do, I do it. And when I don't, I'm fine. The next one is being able to define the problem. You've got to be able to be honest with yourself and define what that problem is. And I'm going to show you how to do it properly in another slide coming up. You also need to define your goal. So once you know the problem is I'm procrastinating, I'm not doing anything. Well, what's the goal? Okay, I want to get this and this and this done by this and this date and time. So it's got to be specific and measurable. Now I've put a big circle around. Here it is. Where's the circle? There. Around the why. Because we do need to know why on certain things. You might not know why on everything, but why do I have the problems that I have? Or why do I procrastinate? Or why do I self-sabotage? Or whatever the why is. Depending on the person, you may need an intervention. The intervention could be a course, a book, someone else in your life who you trust and um, has got the experience of uh, solving that in their own life that can help you please just write this down it's a saying i think it comes out the bible in fact it says by thy fruits you'll know them if you're taking for example financial advice from a poor person do you think that's going to be really good advice 
if you're taking medical advice from a very sick person, do you think you're going to get good advice? You know what I'm saying? You get the point. So buy thy fruits, you'll know them. If you want to consult with someone about something, they need to have walked the path and proven to you that they themselves have accomplished that. Otherwise, I don't know if they can really relate to you and help understand you. The other way with the intervention, if you can't work out your own why, is hire a coach. It might not be forever. It might be for a period. It might be forever. I've got a coaching client going on four years with me now. Weekly coaching for the fourth year. Um, not that he, he can't coach himself. He wants to catch up with someone and speak freely and he'll pay for that. So, you know, he's very used, we're very used to each other. And um, he kind of even knows, like, sometimes I just, he has, he, he says something, what he wants to discuss and the problem of that he wants to talk about. And I'll say to him, if you had to coach yourself, how would you do it? And he thinks and he answers and he's correct. So the truth be told, he could coach himself, but he wants to catch up and meet. That's his preference. He wants an accountability partner, but otherwise you can do it yourself. I'm just saying the why, it's got to circle around because you may be able to do it with yourself, depending on your self-awareness and growth, wherever you are in your life, or you may need an intervention. Then let's just give you an example. Let's go back to the property one, the awareness. I lost the property, I'm feeling bad. Define the problem, okay. When I define the problem, guys, I said to myself, the first thing I said was, how did I create this? I said, how did I create this loss? And I know why. On Monday morning, on the way to the radio station, because I have a radio show, I was grumpy and negative, in a negative emotional state, and I was just annoyed. Um, driving the traffic, I was late. Um, I was stressed that I was going to be late to get ready to go on air just i spent 40 minutes in the traffic in a negative emotional state so when that happened that day three probably of the table that's defining the problem i realized i created that what was the goal i'm not accepting they unsold i'm going to want them sold again okay why i could work out why it was the law of attraction i just explained it now options so when you get options it's like okay so what are my options so my options for me were this this is before I visualized. My option could be, okay, well, three have come back. Thank the person who said they're walking away. Let them go. Um, if they need anything in the future, they can contact you and just accept it and start from scratch to try and um, help another different client or find another one, two, or three or whatever clients and then create those sales again. That's one option. It is. That's what I would have done maybe 12 years ago. Another option would be no, close your eyes and visualize getting what you want and seeing if you could change the energy around from negative to positive and actually the law of attraction will sell the properties for you. That's speaking to myself. That's another option. Another option would be call the office and tell Mike who owns the business. I've got these three properties come back. Um, he might have said, okay, I've got a client for that one. Pearlie might have had one. She works with us. For her client, I would have taken something like that. It's another option. There are many options. But you come up with the options and find the best one for you. And then you must take action. That's next steps. You must take action on your um, best option. And in the option stage, if you're not sure, speak to someone again. Buy thy fruits, you'll know them. Bounce it off someone that you trust, who's more experienced and successful in that particular area, who can help you if you're not sure of the best option. Now, when you actually... When I'm coaching a client, they come up with the options every time. And if I see there's an option that would really just shortcut the thing for them and help them, and they haven't mentioned it, then I ask permission actually from the client if I may put an option on the table. And they generally say yes. And then I share that option. And then after that, they still choose their next steps. Even if from my experience, I know that option that I suggested them is the easiest, most helpful, works every time, guaranteed option. If they don't choose that and they choose another option, you've got to allow the client to actually take that path. Why? Why would I allow them to take that path? If I've given them an option they didn't want, they wanted another one that's much slower, more difficult, takes five times as long. Why would I allow them that? Just anyone, un un unmute your mic and tell me. Anyone? Yes, no? Anyone? 
why would I allow the person to do whatever option I took, even if I know it's not the best one? And I've already put that out there. Any guesses? Come on, someone. You don't know? Okay, I'll tell you. So they can learn. Say that again, Bianca. So they can learn. Correct. 100% because they can learn. Now, we were actually talking about this on the radio show today. It was another show, not the one I was talking about. Um, we learn more from our failures and mistakes and our experiences than we ever learn from words, books. You know, you can get a lot of knowledge, but you don't learn is a change in behavior. So sometimes people have a lot of knowledge, but they haven't actually applied that knowledge yet. And they keep having the same mistake over and over and over again. And the day that... Um, you know, someone might even tell them, let's say an abusive relationship, you might go from one abusive relationship to another one, and your friends keep saying you, you're with the wrong guy, he's, he's, he's abusing you and it's terrible and, and leave. The person won't leave until they're ready to leave. And sometimes we don't understand someone else's path, but there's always a reason for the path they've walked the way they've walked it. It's like there's something they've meant to learn the way they've meant to learn it, and we cannot force our opinion on someone else we could not force someone to do something that's overly controlling you have to allow people to do it their own way so if someone does take the wrong action like maybe they go back to this abusive person when they were separated from them you know everyone's saying no wrong thing to do and it goes down south and doesn't work well that negative experience might be the final thing that makes them learn something that stops that cycle of being in an abusive relationship. So yes, thank you, um, Bianca. You've got to learn from your own experience. Um, just seeing the chat here, you feel this way as you've given your power to someone else. It's time to own your power and take back what's rightfully yours. That's your feedback to the world. Nice, true. The moment you move into the cause, you're no longer in this effect of your life. Correct, which enhances knowledge and increases beliefs. Thank you so much. Sarah, yep. So um, we do. We are causative beings. We are causative beings. And cause and effect is a universal law. All right. So you've got now your options. You work them out for yourself. You choose the next steps as best you can. If you're unsure, consult with someone. Again, buy their fruits. You'll know them. And then, guys, this number six. I could probably do a whole hour lecture on plan and reflect daily. Just that. It is the most powerful personal development practice hands down out of all the personal development books courses coaches teachers trainers i don't know dvds movies whatever you want i'm going to say it with confidence in a minute the most powerful personal development tool in the world is a practice of planning and reflecting daily so it's very simple. You wake up in the morning and you take at least 10 full minutes to 30 minutes, but at least 10, even if you're done in three, just sit there for the other seven minutes and just think, think for a change and um, plan what you want to achieve, whether it's that day, that week, that month. Once you've planned for your day, think about the week. Just review the month. There's something that you haven't thought about that you could possibly or you know should be doing. Go further than that. You can go up to three months if you need to, but plan. Anyway, you've got your daily plan now. You can even do it the night before. I plan the night before the day, not the day off, the night before. And then you go through your day. Let's say you've put 10 things down you want to achieve, or you just take the 80-20 principle. So if you've got 10 things, if you only get your two priorities done, you will actually be effective and successful. But you've got to prioritize the plan. So you take the plan, you say the 10 things, and you've got to number it from 1 to 10. That might take you a while, but you've got to do that. You've got to prioritize. And once you've got the 1 to 10, you must start doing first things first every day. It's one of the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. First things first every day. So the first thing on the list, you do it until you've finished. You don't do anything else until you've done it. 
and then you do the second thing until it's finished. And I promise you, I mean it, if you only do 20% of that list every day, you'll get 80% of the current results you're getting. Because 80% of our activity gives us 20% of our results. And that's what I was doing before I had my coach, wasting time, wasting time. Activity is not necessarily accomplishment. Then guys, at the end of the day, sorry, I just dropped something. Um, you reflect and you look at your plan and you look at your behavior and you get honest with yourself. This is coaching. This is how you coach yourself. You get honest with yourself. And if you don't know how to be honest with yourself, and I'm not being funny, but some people aren't honest with themselves. They'll lie to themselves all the time saying, oh, it's okay. You know, you got to love and accept yourself as you are. Yes, that's fine. But if you're trying to make progress and productivity increase in your life and business, you've got to be brutally honest. Not to beat yourself up and feel terrible. No, to learn. So if you had a bad day and you wasted the whole day, that happens to me. It happened to me before. I'm better at it now. But let's say it was back then. If I had to reflect and it was really that bad, I'm not going to beat myself up. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting it's like the title of John Maxwell's book. Sometimes you win, sometimes you. Who can tell me the last word? Sometimes lose. you win. No, not lose. Learn. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. So if I had a really unproductive day and I came to reflect, the only question I keep asking is, what can I learn? What can I learn from this? Okay, I can learn that. I shouldn't start my day opening emails. Make it a learning. I took four phone calls and it wasted my day until 12 o'clock. What did I learn? If I've got first things first every day, put my phone off. I put it in the drawer, the drawer next to me that I don't even see the thing because it lights up in all kinds. No. So you just put learnings like that. If it was, I knew that it was very important to call whoever it was and I didn't do it and now it lost me business, that's a learning. Customers come first, prioritize customer calls, make it a rule and see if it helps your business. Whatever the learning is, I'm just giving examples here. You write down what you learned. That's what reflection is. Now it's not enough just to get the learnings. We have to what with the learnings. Come on guys, someone's going to give it to me. Implement them. Thank you, Vicky. We've got to implement the learnings 100%. And if you did that, and if you only improved by 1% a week, you'd be 50% better by the end of the year. Planning and reflecting is the most powerful personal coaching tool on the planet. You've got to give it a go. I've created gratitude journals. I don't have one here on this desk, but I printed them myself because I couldn't find a gratitude journal that did this for me. And I'll teach you how to do it. You take any book. Hold on, here is one. No. You take any book like this, ordinary exercise book. On the one page on the side here, you write um, reflection for the day. The first, you just make three headings. Reflection for the day, around the, the middle of the page, down there you write learnings. So you put reflection for the day, learnings and priorities for tomorrow so just three labels this side of a book and on this side gratitude and every night before i go to bed i've done this practice for years now i reflect on my day i write my learnings and then i think about tomorrow and i think what are my priorities for tomorrow so already planning now that's planning for the next day and you know what you don't need to have 150 things it's three to six things if you did three important and urgent, important things that help you get further with whatever you want to do, grow your business, whatever it may be, and you write those down, you will, one, have a good night's sleep because you've emptied your brain, and two, um, you've already got it marinating in your subconscious mind. It's preparing you to be effective tomorrow and do that thing. And then on the right-hand side is gratitude. You just write gratitude for that day. Just journal a page of gratitude um, to know exactly where you are. Okay. Then accountability, you do need an accountability partner. That's why people pay coaches. Do you know how many people pay a coach? They don't actually like have a problem or drastic failures or big mess ups. They don't. They're highly, highly successful. They pay a coach because of the accountability. So I have accountability with Nancy. 
on many levels. I have accountability with one of my coaching clients and we send a photo of what we promise we're going to do every day, a photo and text it um, so that we make sure that we're keeping ourselves accountable. And I can tell you it works because if I don't send a photo of whatever it is that I'm practicing, there's no way I can go to sleep because I have to send that photo. And that's what an accountability partner makes you do. It makes you do that thing. I even take um, like gratitude journaling. There's a, a client of mine who asked me to keep him accountable for gratitude journaling. So I said, cool, I do it every night as a practice I have for years. I'll send you a photo. You send me a photo just of the corner of your book and the date where you've written the date before your gratitude journaling. I take my gratitude journal on holiday. I take it on an airplane. I take it everywhere because I will not miss a day. That's the power of accountability. So if you don't have that in your life, find a friend who you can be a accountability partner with. And people at the highest performance levels in the world, they have coaches. Um, it's not people who are like my story of 2017 that are struggling that hire coaches. It's actually high performance people that want to go to the next level. That's why the best tennis players in the world, the best soccer players in the world, even in sports. And it's that accountability. They, they give you feedback, honest feedback, and they hold you accountable to um, your improvement. And then the last one there is review your results. So when you coach yourself, you do need to have like a loop where you come back and review how you've done. Maybe it's a week later, maybe it's a month and get honest with yourself. And there you step right back into number one awareness. So as you review your results, it's similar to plan and reflecting really, but you look at, when I review things, I look at like the end of the financial year or the end of a quarter when you do a bears or the end of six months, those kind of big milestones. And if it's with your health, review. If it's with your weight and you have an intention to reduce weight. By the way, I'm going to be running a reduce weight, the Silver Method Way half day workshop. I just decided I'm going to do it in a couple of weeks time. So if anybody wants to know about that, um, I don't know how, let me know, drop it in the chat box or something. Um, and I'll make sure that you stay in, in, in content. But even reducing weight, you do, you do need to review your results. And then if you've achieved or haven't achieved, you've got to, again, reflect on that, come up with learnings and put that straight back into your awareness. And as you keep this loop going, you will get better and better through time. So as your self-awareness, the biggest one grows, you get more and more powerful at coaching yourself. And I mean it, if you don't feel strong about coaching yourself, hire a coach, guys. There are many coaches out there. I'm a coach. Nancy's a certified coach. She's a brilliant coach, very different to me. Um, she's also very good um, relating to women with kids. She's got four children. So we spoke about that on the radio today, especially she's got three um, kids with um, challenges like ADHD and Asperger's and whatever, three out of the four. So she's really got a doctorate in tough parenting. All right, so let's talk about awareness. You've got to practice self-awareness every day. Practice it, be, be aware of being aware. Whenever you have negative emotion, pause and then think, what are my options? Ask reflective questions. That's how you get awareness. At the end of every day, reflect. Ask yourself coaching questions. It's just very simple. I'm not a coach. What are coaching questions? Okay, they're very simple. I'll tell you what they are. Coaching questions are more open questions, like not why, like they're just saying, like, why didn't I do my um, gym this morning? Or why didn't I do my homework or why didn't I do the study I was meant to do? Rather say what, what, what were the factors that, that like caused me to not take that action? Ask what, what's a beautiful word? What, what questions, how, how's a good open question? How could I do it better next time? Also what, what did I learn? So these open questions, not was I good or bad, closed question, or is this right or wrong? Yes or no. More open questions. That's coaching questions, drawing out from you, the hard answers, making you think deeply and reflecting deeply. Meditation is one of the wonder, most wonderful ways to develop self-awareness. Just meditating. So how's it related? It's a long explanation and I don't know it exactly, but all I can tell you is that meditation, because of your mindfulness and presence and managing your mind, makes you get off autopilot. And through repeated meditation, you become more and more self-aware more and more in the present, more mindful. So very helpful. Of course, self-help books, personal development courses, the silver method, brilliant. They do help your awareness. You just get better and better. Listening to this tonight, maybe some form of personal development for many of you, it may help you somehow. Just incre increase your awareness. And then you've got to practice awareness. 
and that's how you get better. Defining the problem, I'm going to do a quick exercise with you. Please do me a favor, grab a piece of paper, write at the top of the paper, a recent mistake problem that you've had, a recent, something that you've done wrong, a failure. Just write down a mistake or failure that's bothered you terribly, that's most recent one you can think of. You've done something that you regret or you, you messed up something. Please do this exercise with me. Um, put your cameras on if you um, can. And then I'd like you just to absolutely face reality as to what happened. I want you to blame no one. Don't be the victim. And just write down the answers to these few questions. I'll give you... I want someone to tell me that they're doing it and then I can tell me when you finish doing it so I can know when to talk again. I'll just put some music on or something. Who... Who's going to play with me here? Come on. Jacinta, you do it. I can see you smiling. I'm trying to think of something, but I can't think of something. Because nothing's gone wrong because you're so successful. <laughs> Maybe I didn't take enough risks. No? Um, okay. Has someone got some major problem? Anything that hasn't worked out right? Just. Yep, I can do this one. All right, Vicky, so you tell me when you're done. Just answer those questions for yourself and write them down. What went wrong? When did it go wrong? Where did it go wrong? Why did it go wrong? How did I contribute to making it go wrong? And what can I learn from this experience? And how will I apply what I learned in the future? Let's play some music. Maybe something. And you just try this. Everyone just give this a go. Please all do this as best you can. Just give the exercise a go and see how much you can actually learn from one major failure or mistake just by answering these questions. And take a photo of the screen if you like and carry this around with you. Whenever something goes wrong, use this. Your self-awareness and self-coaching will go, through, go up. I 
now for you, Vicky. Uh, just putting the last one down. Excellent. You're a champ. Okay. Yep. It was um, three minutes, by the way. I just wanted to time that on purpose so you'd have the awareness for the whole group. Thank you so much, Vicky, for um, playing um, playing along here. It was in three minutes Vicky did that. So, Vicky, I don't know if you want to share this openly or you just, or if you don't, the situation, or you can. Otherwise, um, just. Share yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go through it. It's easier that way. Yeah. All good. Oh, okay. Um, what went wrong was. Um, a relationship breakdown. Um, I had an issue with something that happened and discussed it with my son and his wife got involved when it wasn't her issue. Like, yeah. So that that was the um that was the situation. And it happened back in March, um, in the in the evening of March the 13th. <clears throat> and where it went wrong was by distance and by text. Um, why did it go wrong? Um, first of all, because it was by text and not a conversation. Um, poor timing, interference by someone who wasn't part of the problem. Um, too much honesty and too much culmination of unaddressed issues from the past. Um, how did I contribute? And what's that one I'm up to? One, two, three, four, five. Yep. How did I contribute? Um, was lack of discernment, and um, I took the bait. <clears throat> Sorry, I took the bait and got emotional when she got emotional, and um, was texting rather than talking, which is a big mm. mistake. Um, what can I learn from the experience? Conversations face to face beat texting. Um, don't bottle up issues over time, and use discernment with where I put my trust. And how will I apply what I learn? Um, Walk away when it's necessary. Deal direct with the person and with the issues as they arise. And um, use discernment when honesty will make things worse, not better. Okay. Fantastic. Everyone give her a clap, even if it's just a wave. Well done, Vicky. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That's a perfect example. And can I may, may I ask you, did you learn something in this three minutes? Oh, uh, this, yeah, yeah, well, this has been going around in my head for a long time, but this, the exercise cemented it, yeah, and I'm more, I'm more comfortable with the whole situation than I was, and um, I haven't spoken to her since March, and it's caused a lot of other problems, but I'm at a stage where I'll talk, I'm, <clears throat> sorry, rebuilding my relationship with my son, so that I still have a relationship with my son. Basically. Excellent. Now, you're a silver graduate. Any other silver graduate here? Um, what technique could you use without having to talk to these two people, the son or the wife? What could you do to heal that relationship? Anyone go. Unmute your mics. Give it to me. Or you yourself, Vicky. What could you do to heal that relationship? To the lab. Okay, um, go ahead. Well, I, I actually did the forgiveness exercise. Brilliant. Um, a few times. And to be honest with you, I don't think I was ready to do the forgiveness exercise um so yeah um that's the main one i've done with it i haven't tried to do distance um like getting connecting with her consciousness and talking talking to her or through sleep or anything um i'm just letting it settle for the moment because she doesn't want to build a bridge and i've got to honor that she doesn't want to build a bridge at this stage all right, fair enough. Um, I will say um, with confidence that um, if you did, if you did want to, and you, um, you said you weren't ready for the forgiveness, but if you did want to heal the relationship, you could absolutely do nothing in the physical world as in speaking to anyone, but you could go into your lab. Now, if you're not a silver graduate, you can close your eyes, go into a meditative state, imagine that person in front of you and speak to them like about everything get it all out the good the bad the ugly 
get it all out and once you get it all out you'll come towards the end and you probably feel that release op offers the opportunity potentially to move to forgiveness if it doesn't then just get it all out and then do it again and then say what you want you want a relationship with them with your son you want whatever it is that you want put your son up on your uh, mental screen but it does work so i know some people here jacinta you were in the three yeah, I just, chapters i was going to say uh, the letter writing is probably the best best way writing a letter yep so you could write a letter for this <coughs> example um to the person who's upset you and get everything out but you don't post it you get everything everything out and keep going until it's really all out and then at the end write gratitude to the person for what you learned from that situation that's how you end the letter thanking them for what this has taught you and then burn the letter it works um i just want to tell you i've had a very uh, rough relationship um, with my older brother not rough but we didn't really have much of a connection for years maybe 20 years maybe 30 years and um during that mastermind that jacinta's talking about i worked on my brother my older brother um so my younger brother's anniversary is passing today by the way fourth of july mm -hmm. so anyway um anyway i worked on on the elder one through that and did forgiveness 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 i did forgiveness writing the reading one the letter writing the whole lot and i was in south africa i've just come back last week um, after being there for four weeks and it was absolutely like a whole new brother sister relationship and my brother has phoned me every single day since i've come back we had the most wonderful time we're going to invest together which is something i'd never ever dream of doing before for a property for my mother she's going to stay in south africa and um we're so calm we talk so lovingly tells me he loves me i tell him i love him too it's completely transformed and i can tell you there was no conversation that went from this cold, non-existent relationship to this warm, wonderful, nurtured one. There was no conversation in the physical world. I'm letting you all know that it was all inner work done. And Jacinta, I don't know if you want to share, but that 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 mastermind was called um, the three missing chapters of Think and Grow Rich, which is love, forgiveness, and tithing. And the forgiveness, we practiced it for more than a few weeks. Mm. Wow, that makes me want to cry, Janine. That's the best story. That's beautiful. Yep, so, Vicky, yep, sorry, Jay. No? Yep. Jacinta, sorry. No, sorry. I was just, um, I was teary over your story with your brother. That's really Thank cool. you. Yep. Mm. So, that's why I say with, with confidence, um, you change a relationship by working on the energy. Um, and I've done this before years ago in another relationship, no conversation just did the energy work and it transformed the relationship. So when it comes to forgiveness, I'm, I'm the biggest culprit for wasting years to get to the point where I was ready to forgive. But once I did the particular mastermind that I did it with, um, with Jacinda, I did it with my mentor. It's called the Epilogue to Think and Grow Rich. It's a book. And um, until I did that and I had to study the book and mastermind it and practice and everything did i come to really learn the value of forgiveness and once i entered through that door um and i'm out the other side with the the way it's transformed my life i just want to recommend to everyone don't waste a day with resentment and anger in your heart do not waste a day your health depends on it your your happiness depends on it and even your money and finances depend on it your life purpose being most expressed depends on it. It might sound like they're not related. They are absolutely related. You can't be blocked in one area of your life and think you're not blocked in money and um, other happiness and joy So and health. So forgiveness, people don't wait. Um, if you want something, there's Louise Hay, Releasing Anger. It's on YouTube. It's free. Grab it, take it, do it. Look for forgiveness meditations, whatever. Just find what suits you, writing the letter, anything. But do get started and do do the inner work anyway back to coaching thank you for sharing that story i appreciate your contribution there i'm going to move quickly now so we can still get to meditate so basically why do we sabotage ourselves who can tell me please it's on the screen belief. We, yeah we have and and beliefs reside in the subconscious mind 
So they below our level of awareness, they are deep beliefs. We think they are reality. We think it's fact. They're not often facts. They are just beliefs. You know, somebody's right, somebody's wrong. Would this work with someone who has passed? Yes, Bianca, it absolutely would. You can resolve unfinished business with someone who has passed. Maybe you should contact me afterwards and have a brief chat. I'll I'll put my phone number up for people who, if you want to. Um, yes, you can. Absolutely. You can resolve things with people who've passed on and get absolute peace. So as you can see, there, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, habits, beliefs, confidence, everything. Everything's in the subconscious mind that drives our behavior. So it says here, beliefs determine our living experience. Good life, bad life, happy life, sad life, beliefs, 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 beliefs. We think it's reality. We think life is hard. It's not that life is hard. It's that we believe that life is hard, that we have a hard life. I'm not kidding. If you can change that belief, you can change your experience. It's not that there are no jobs. It's that we believe that there are no jobs. It's not that money is hard, money is tight. It's that we believe that money is tight. Because if we, had, if we held thoughts of abundance and more than enough feelings, and excluded anything opposite to that, we would create abundance. So beliefs determine our living experience. Beliefs drive our behavior. 95% of what we do is a habit. 95% of all your results today in your life as an adult stem from your imprint phase between one and seven years of age. Can you see how important it is to know where to do the work to change your results we need to work in the subconscious level how do we change our results reprogram the subconscious mind and how much more effective is it than using willpower and effort here's the answer write it down Thirty thousand. i'm not kidding this is neuroscience it's thirty thousand times more effective to reprogram your subconscious mind than to try and change your results with effort willpower plans to-do lists and meetings. I don't know what else we, we try and do. So visualizing with emotion is reprogramming the subconscious mind. That's what we do in the silver method. Or to change your results, you either get a coach because they're going to help you pull from the subconscious into the conscious, give you an epiphany and it'll change your life. There's a saying, until the unconscious is made conscious, it will rule your life and you will call it fate. So get a coach, get an accountability partner, or do a course, or do the silver method. It works. The whole course is working at the subconscious level from day one to day four. Visualize even five minutes a day with emotion. You reprogramming your subconscious mind, success, 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 whatever the success is for you, the new result. And of course, learn to coach yourself. The more awareness you have, the more you can coach yourself. The more you know what you're reading on the screen here, you can do it yourself. Visualize and change your results like I did with the property story. Right, when it comes to options, go back to a time in your life, always remember this, when you were successful and you achieved and how did you get there? What did you do? And relive that feeling and get that feeling of confidence back inside you when things go wrong. Feel those positive feelings. And then think I did it then, I can do it now. I, I got over that then, I can get over this now. Go back to evidence in your life when you were successful and visualize. I can say it every time, even if you visualize for five minutes a day, you will improve your life. And, and when you visualize and remember the feeling of success, you've got to have it and feel it in your whole body. Um, okay, so whenever things go wrong, definitely one of your options, make a note for yourselves, one of your options must be to have a visualization I don't know, practice regarding the thing you're trying to solve. And then whatever you do, please do take action, take your next steps. Nothing happens until you act. I spoke about plan and reflecting daily. It's going to be just like that chick. You're going to go, woohoo, my life's getting better and I'm becoming a champion. And you won't know why. And then you'll say, oh, Janine said, if things start working out well for you and you were planning and reflecting, it's because you're planning and reflecting. Okay, accountability partner, there's Nancy. She helps me in my business. I love her. She's fantastic. And yeah. We accountability partners, we help each other. Now, here's three options for your accountability. One, on your own, you can use it. It's called Habit Bull. It's an app. You put in what your things you want to practice and you do them every day. You've got to get routines to make your life better. Coach yourself. So I use Habit Bull if I need to develop a new habit. And that's part of coaching yourself to becoming better. 
whether that's gratitude journaling, planning and reflecting, meditating daily, whatever it is for you, exercising, I don't know, whatever it is. Or another option for accountability is get a friend, someone you trust. If you're no good with any of these two, get a coach, hire a coach. It's worth it. The money invested is absolutely worth it. It will change your life, it transformed mine, and the people of the highest performance in the world use a coach. If you know how to coach yourself, this is the steps that I'm hoping will help you. Okay, I always say you can only determine success by your results because results don't lie. Don't tell a person, oh, I'm doing so well because of this and that in words. It's got to be your results. Okay. Once you see results, my friends, it becomes addictive. Whether it's a thing that you want is financial freedom, if it's increased income, if it's owning your own business, if it's getting more spare time in your life, if it's doing more personal development, if it's, I don't know, saving for retirement, meeting new people, whatever it is, finding a soulmate. Once you start seeing results because of coaching yourself, you will become addicted to success. Whoops. So why would now be the best time to get a coach if you don't have a coach? If you don't, if you can't not work with the, if you can't do it on your own, you want, you want a coach? This was me. Life's too short to be feeling unfulfilled. And the only way I got unstuck, unless you can coach yourself, get unstuck. But don't stay stuck because you're just wasting time. Dealing with major setbacks or trauma or major grief, terrible loss, bankruptcy, things like that. I'm sorry, I don't think a person can really effectively coach themselves out of that. Get yourself a coach if you've had a major setback because you do need intervention. Um, finding clarity and direction, absolutely. Formulating a plan and next steps, absolutely. That's what you get from clarity. Improve relationships, 100%. And become empowered because you learn to coach yourself as you get coached if you haven't had a coach before. If anyone wants a free consultation, please. I'm being very honest and straight. I love you all. But if you're serious about wanting a coach, have the free consultation. If you're not really wanting coaching, then don't have the free consultation because the consultation is about what you, like, are we the right fit for you to do coaching? It's not a free coaching session. It's a free consultation. If you're interested in having coaching, I have something called an eight week breakthrough program. This is briefly what it is. Um, we do a couple of things over eight weeks. These six particular steps with rapid results clarify your why we do things like understand your sabotage and I give you the absolute the actual toolkit to un to get yourself out of sabotage every time with success we uh, um, capture your shadow values shadow values are the reason we take any behavior we don't know why we do the wrong things but we keep doing them that's a shadow value so what that is and how we learn how to use that positively then some other things about getting rid of your blocks and self-love and all that so if you're interested in any of that my number's there. Just text, um, send me an SMS. Let me just put it in the, whoops. Just send me an SMS. My number's on my website and say you'd like to have the free consultation. I'm only looking to do two, to be honest. So if you really want it, jump in. Um, happy to help. I've got a special offer at the moment for the eight-week breakthrough. Okay. Um, just quickly before we do our meditation. The Science of Getting Rich nine-week mastermind starts on the 20th of July. If you'd like to book in, it's on my website. It's the best nine weeks, and I love it because it's nine. It's not like a six-week mastermind or a seven-week. It's nine weeks. The, longest, the longer it is, the better because you change through a process. You can never change through an event. You've got to change bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, week in and week out. Silver Methods online in July over two weekends if you want to join. Again, all on the website. The price is $1,500 if you're new. If you're a graduate, you don't pay anything. You just pay the C charge. I've got the Four Key Skills free webinar. The Four Key Skills to take charge of your life on the 12th of July. Put that in your calendar. This is the iceberg, tip of the iceberg on the Silver Method. Uh, if you're interested in property, I'm doing a property investing webinar, the other arm of my business, on the 28th of July at 8 p.m. It means property investing in 2223. Someone's in the chat box. Me. Um, what is that relating to? Uh, okay. If you, I'm not too sure, Bianca, what you what that's relating to, but um, you can write it up and, and let me know, or you can un unmute your mic. All right. We're going to meditate now. So grab a pen and paper. I'll take you into relaxed state. And then we're going to ask a couple of questions at the end. And in your relaxed meditative state, 
you're going to um, write down your answer. So we're going to set your intention for the month and some next steps using your intuition, your high self to get the answers. Okay, is everybody ready? I will text you. Okay, thanks, Bianca. No problem. Um, okay. Here's the sound. So we'll do a short relax quickly and then create some imagery. So just have a pen and paper to write down your answers. And remember, write down your first impressions. Don't analyze anything. Don't think it's just write down what pops in your head. Find a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, just relax your body from head to toe, starting from the top of your head and flowing slowly downward, all the way down to your feet. Take another two or three slow, deep belly breaths in. And as you exhale, just really release that like you're blowing out a candle through your mouth, like. <sighs> And just as you release like that, release any tension in your body and feel yourself relax like a sweep from the top of your head flowing all the way down through every part of your body, down to your toes. Continue to breathe deeply slowly and rhythmically you are now experiencing a nice deep state of relaxation you're now going to create in your mind an ideal place of relaxation it can be real or imagined somewhere that you've actually been or just somewhere that you'd like to go and imagine it to be a place where you feel totally relaxed. Just begin to experience this place right now. Now that you've created your ideal place of relaxation, you're going to add a waterfall of white light into the scene. Place it wherever you choose. The waterfall is gentle, allowing you to stand under this cascading beautiful white light. This light is a healing energy, a clearing energy. Your waterfall of light is now created. Walk over to the waterfall and stand under the white healing light. Allow the white light to just pour over you, swirl around you, encompassing you within its glow. Feel it clearing all the stress and tension away cleansing your energy, your aura, from your entire lifetime. And as this light clears your energy field, just notice how much happier you look. Notice the smile on your face. See how the weights that you've been carrying are no longer a burden. Notice how your energy field is expanding out as you are radiating love. This waterfall of light is always available to you whenever you need it. 
All you need to do is close your eyes, imagine your ideal place of relaxation, and just immerse yourself in this healing white light. Take another deep breath, just relax even deeper, and repeat these statements to yourself mentally. Every day, in every way, I am getting better, better and better. Positive thoughts bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind and immune system. Now, imagine the white light turns to green. You are now immersed in a glowing green light. This green light is unconditional love. It surrounds you. It encompasses you. It actually flows right through your entire being and fills you with love. Any pain or hurts you felt, any angry moments, just allow this green light, this beautiful unconditional love, just to heal all those spaces now. It's now time to step out of the waterfall. Step out of the waterfall of light, knowing that your energy field is now clean and clear. You're feeling centered, relaxed. And now that you've reset your body and your mind for the month, we're going to now set your intention for the month ahead. The month of July. Just trust that you're tuning into your own inner wisdom, your higher self, or intuition, any name you want to give it. That part of you that if you are tuned in, guides you and intuitively knows what is best for you. This is the first question. When you get an answer, anything that pops in your mind, just write it down and then close your eyes and re-enter your meditation. The first question, what do I need to focus on for the month ahead? Write down your first impressions. Next question, what steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to do, be or have? Write down your first impressions. What steps do I need to take? Next question. What do I need to let go of or release? What do I need to let go of or release?
And what do I need to embrace? What do I need to embrace? And just the last general question, is there anything else? Is there anything else I need to do or anything else I need to know? Is there anything else? And now just allow a nice deep breath and relax. Bring your attention back to your body. Wriggle your fingers and toes. At the count of three, you'll open your eyes, be wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health. One, two, coming out slowly now. Three, eyes open, wide awake, feeling fine and in perfect health feeling better than before okay welcome back everybody type in the chat or open your mic and just say did, was that helpful anyone get some good answers something that helps you anyone Thank you, Hanan. Did you get some good answers? Anything to help? Anyone get any helpful answers? That's my question. Yes, clarity for the month. I did. Excellent. More and more. Okay, my only feedback is thank you. Yes, another one. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Whole lot of yeses. Trust that. Absolutely trust what you got in a relaxed state. That's your own intuition. Thank you, Charmaine. Guiding you. And more important than getting the guidance is to act on the guidance. So if anyone wants to ask me anything or share anything, please do so right now. Otherwise, I'm going to end the recording and we can say love and farewell to each other and have a good night. Three. Janine, on your, um, where you've got the upcoming appointments, um, you've got Silver Intuition Online is happening on, is it the 16th and 17th instead of the 14th and 17th? Yes, it is the 16th, 16th. and 17th. Yeah, sure. Let me okay. just get there. Um, is that my typo? Thank you, Vicky. You yeah, are that's okay. I was just I was just looking at it in my diary, so I just want to check. Uh, sorry, a part of the typo. Today. Yeah, that's 16. Thank you. 16, 17, 21, 22, 22. two weekends. Thank you, Vicky. Well, yeah, no worries. Thanks. Yes, Sam. Oops. Janine, I was just wondering when is the where where I can find the information for the property one. I couldn't find it on your website. Um, it hasn't been posted yet. Sorry, who's asking? Oh, okay. Navid. Navid, um, can you just take this mobile number and text me your email address? This mobile number oh. here. Oh well, thank you. The bottom of the screen. And just text me your email address and property, and I'll invite you to the property webinar. Otherwise, if you're on my mailing list, you will know about it. If you're not on my mailing list, um, then you can sign up to it on the first page of my website, Janine Shuck International, and you get a free meditation if you do that, and you get a technique to help manage your inner dialogue if you do that. So um, go for your line. All right. Any more questions from anyone or comments or feedback? That was awesome. Oh, you enjoyed it, did you? Yeah, I loved it. That was really cool. Thank you. So you can coach yourself now. I can, but I've also, I've been thinking for a long time that I've wanted a coach, particularly in relation to business. And I think I've, someone came to mind as to who that would be. Yeah. Excellent. 
always act on your um, ideas. By the way, you wrote it down. I told you to write it down earlier. Ideas are the first manifestation. So if you ever get an idea, definitely, definitely act on an idea. And act on it same day, preferably same hour. Um, thank you to everyone who said thank you. Can we access this meditation exercise? Yes, this one, excuse me, that you've just done, um, Phil and Elizabeth. All of them are on my YouTube channel. It's called Silver Method Australia YouTube channel or my name, Janine Shaka YouTube channel. But just be careful, I've got two YouTube channels, two, that would must be the Silver Method Australia one with 200 plus videos. The other one is, um, I don't know what I was doing when I very first was in Toastmasters, I used to put my um, speeches on there. So don't worry about that one. <laughs> it's the Silver Method Australia one. And all the Meaningful Mondays are there. There's um, plenty topics. There are over 200 helpful videos. Some are lessons like these and some are much shorter, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. So, you know, subscribe if you like to the channel. Click the bell and then you can get them whenever there is a new one out there. All right, everyone, I'm going to stop the recording.